Marvelously fertile, it has all types of fruit and in great abundance. These advantages are duplicated by exportation because the surplus produce is easily sold to the numerous trading ships, a practice favored by its river currents. The geographer Strabo thus referred to the outstanding richness of the Almodova district in Roman times. There is evidence that on the site of what is today the village of Almodova del Rio, there once existed a Carbula, a small fortified settlement very closely linked to the Guadalquivir in terms of the activity carried out there. The journey along the Roman Baetica route will take the visitor to Cabula or Almodova del Rio via Stigi, the town today called Ethiha. In Roman times, the two towns were separated by 76 miles, or two days of traveling. Traveling by today's roads, the two villages are only 63 kilometers apart, that is to say, just 55 minutes. A Roman milarium or milestone has been conserved in Almodova. This road sign used to inform travelers about distances in all probability belong to the Via Augusta. It dates from the reign of the Emperor Aurelianus and originally stood in the station of Mango Negro. Today it can be seen at the tourism office in Almodova del Rio. During the Republican period, Kabula was an oppidum, a fortified village which protected and governed land used for agricultural purposes. Its importance became evident in the second century BC, when it began to issue its own coins. Years later, during the empire, the Roman administration redefined Carbula as a Pagos Carbulensis. A Pagos was a rural settlement occupied mostly by farmers, laborers and slaves. Following the reform carried out by the emperor Diocletian in the 3rd century AD, the Pagos became the smallest of the administrative districts in which to a province could be divided. Pliny, after Corduba, where the Baetis becomes navigable, comes the cities of Carbula and Dituvo, and the river Singulis, which flows into the Baetis on the same side. The side referred to by Pliny the Elder is the left-hand side the southern bank of the Guadalquivir, and it is there that the singulis, today called the Genil, flows into the Guadalquivir. This text by Pliny, along with archaeological discoveries, have given rise to a hypothesis concerning the history of the Roman town Carbula, which rejects the administrative changes and instead suggests that the Oppidum and the Pagast existed simultaneously until at least the middle of the 4th century. Carbulo was in any case one of the region's major olive oil distribution points in the region. The olive oil obtained from the local presses was kept in pitchers specifically made for that purpose in the local potteries and enjoyed a wonderful reputation in Rome. Ceramics workshops spread out along both banks of the Baetis, above all on the left. For Kabula, the river was its most important and most efficient means of communication with other major cities. Moreover, the fragility and weight of the oil pitchers also made river transport faster, safer and cheaper. At the point where it flowed past Almodova, the river was well suited to loading and shipping the oil because both banks formed high cliffs of clay rock. 
The amphora for oil is known as Dressel 20, and its design was completely different from those used for wine or sauces. Globe-shaped and lined on the inside with pine resin to prevent leakage, it weighed 30 kilos and had the capacity to carry 70. Teams of slaves were needed to move the amphorae. which bore different kinds of printed marks. The Phlegina recorded the name of the potter or the head of the pottery workshop, while the Tutili Picti identified the oil production center for tax purposes. Once in Rome, the oil was transferred from the pitchers to skins, which were much easier to handle. At this point, the amphorae were useless because their inner walls were soaked with oil. Used amphorae were piled up near the harbour. The volume of oil imports was so great that these discarded pitchers built up into a mountain. The testacio, with some spectacular statistics. 50 meters high, a surface area of 22,000 square meters, and around 20 million fragments of pottery. The geographer Strabo wrote, the Bietis is followed for about 1,200 stadia, from the ocean to Cordoba and the area little beyond. The river banks and the islets in the river are well cultivated. The beauty of the landscape should also be mentioned, with its woodland areas and other plantations. The oil stored in animal skins was transported to the river by beasts of burden, and the loading operation took place from the riverside portus. In Almodova, the remains of a portus can still be seen hidden among the undergrowth at the foot of the castle. The amphorae were first loaded onto lintres, small or propelled craft, with no keel or sails, ideal for moving in shallow water. Originally, they were made out of tree trunks, but later this construction method was improved. Thanks to the fertility of its land, the river and the Cerro Redonda outcrop, Almodova has proved very attractive to a number of civilizations, not only the Romans. The earliest known settlers in the area date back to the Neolithic age, and these were followed by Iberians, Romans, Visigoths and Arabs. The Moorish period left the town the magnificent castle at the top of the promontory, and since then the history of the village of Almodova del Rio has been inseparable from that of its fortress. When the Moors built the castle in 740, they called it Almudawar, meaning round or secure. After several centuries of conflict, King Ferdinand III finally entered the village with no opposition in 1240. Don Francisco del Corral e Guzman, Knight of the Order of Santiago, purchased Almodova in 1629 and the village became part of his estate. At the end of the 19th century, its owner at that time, the Count of Toralba, had the castle restored to its present appearance. Total Josefa Lopez of the tourism office Talk about the offer of the castle of Almodova in situ. We are at the entrance to the Castillo de Almodova, which is the main attraction in our town. It is open every day, including Sundays and holidays. It can be visited privately from 11 to 2.30 in the afternoon, from 4 to 8 in summer. Even at weekends we are open at all times.
From 11 in the morning to 8 in the evening, it has plenty of signs, information panels on the towers and all the information necessary can be obtained. But you can also organize a guided visit. Y puede obtener toda la información necesaria, pero también puede optar a, a visitas con, con guía. Como todo castillo, like all castles, the fortress at Almodovar del Rio has its own legend. 1,000 years ago, the Almoravids arrived in the Iberian Peninsula. They were a fierce nomadic tribe of warriors, and one of their objectives was to capture the Alcazar fortress at Cordoba, where Prince Fath al Mamum lived with his wife, the Princess Saida. During the ensuing fight, Saida, together with her family, had to move to the castle at Almodóvar. On the 28th of March, 1091, the prince was killed in battle and from the tower of the castle, the princess saw a riderless white steed approach the fortress. The next day, the Almoravids took the castle and imprisoned Zaida in a dungeon where she died of pain and grief. Ever since then, legend has it that a lady in white appears in the tower every 28th of March, and that her wailing lament can be heard in the streets of the village below. In the shadow of the castle, the visitor can find many more interesting places and monuments. The Baroque Church of La Immaculada Concepción is the village's main church. The Shrine of Our Lady Nuestra Señora del Rosario, the patron saint of the village, was built as a parish church by Saint Ferdinand himself, according to popular tradition. Apart from the religious buildings, there is also an ethnological museum, with tools and objects illustrating village customs over the past few centuries. If the visitor needs refreshment, he or she simply has to go to one of the 30-plus fountains scattered throughout the village. The natural surroundings of the Cerro Redondo Promontory are uniquely beautiful and the sights from the vantage points in the castle are breathtaking. To the south, the fertile cultivated plain covered with olive trees. To the north, the Sierra de Ornatuelos Natural Park. This spur of the Sierra Morena mountain range covers over 4,000 hectares and contains several rivers. An abundance of water which has given rise to an enormously varied local flora and fauna. Another spot worth visiting is the Breña Reservoir, just four kilometers from the village. Its water is perfect for bathing, fishing and water sports. Mm. 
Visitors are often surprised to see typical Mediterranean woodland plants growing at the water's edge, providing refuge for the deer and wild boar which go there to drink. The locals are especially proud of their vegetable stews and their game dishes, whether they be animal or fowl seasoned with herbs. Other popular dishes are gazpacho, salmorejo, cod salad, artichokes in extra quality olive oil and farmyard chicken drumsticks a la antigua or old-fashioned style with traditionally prepared spicy sausage, chorizo, black pudding and cooked and smoked meats. Craft in Almodóvar is mainly associated with hunting. Local taxidermists specialize in stuffing large game animals and the heads of fighting bulls. There are several workshops engaged in this complex, fascinating profession, which requires the craftsman not only to display the skill, ingenuity and capacity of a sculpture, but also to be fully versed in all aspects of nature. The wild boar is brought from behind the hands and skinned, so what it is left is the head and cup. Once it is here, we skin it, we extract the skull, and we measure it before skinning it in order to obtain the most exact model. The head is boiled, cleaned, everything is really white, well disinfected, and the skin is treated, cut out with a blade and immersed in liquids to tan it. Once the skin is being tanned, we do what we would call a sculpture. Depending on the measurements taken from the various animals, we make a sculpture. The polyester model is then made from this sculpture, and once empty it is made of polyurethane, which is what is found under the skin. Esa escultura luego se le, se le saca un molde, así, ¿no?, de poliéster. Y luego, una vez que esté vacío, ¿no? que se sacaría, una vez que esté vacío, pues se hace de poliuretano, que al final es lo que, lo que lleva debajo de la piel, ¿no? Almodóvar is just 22 kilometers down the A431 road from Córdoba. This proximity allows it to benefit from the lines of communication which fan out from the provincial capital. Almodóvar del Río is very festive. In the month of February we start the carnival, dating back to the 19th century. On the 28th of February we hold the Andalusia Day Festival. We all celebrate it with a public gathering in which the associations provide tasting of migas to the attendants and important groups in the province of Córdoba. The month of May is our cultural May. It starts with the Cruces de Mayo, May crosses, to then go on to the Fiesta de las Fachadas, Facade Fiesta. All the neighbors decorate their front doors with flower pots, shawls, and objects characteristic of our region. In the second week of the month of May, we have a pilgrimage to Our Lady of the Virgin of Fatima. The night before, we have a flower offering, a pilgrimage party where singers sing, and the following day, early in the morning, the town goes with the Virgin, horses, and pilgrims to the Fuenreal estate. But the most important festival in Almodoba del Rio is the fair dedicated to Our Lady of Rosario. It is held at the beginning of October and in the first day the gigantes y cabezudos come out with music. Then the festival queen is elected and we see the fireworks called in Almodóvar, Castillitos de Fuego. Everybody is invited to the Almodóvar del Rio festivals. In the words of the poet Gerardo Diego, Guadalquivir is so green with old olive oil, if the ferryman should lose me, I will cross myself. Almodova sits between the mountains and the agricultural plain it protects from its promontory, like a lighthouse guiding travelers, tucked away in the curves of the Guadalquivir. The great river, like the village, has been known by as many names as the settlers it has welcomed. This stop on the Roman Baetica route offers the traveller the opportunity to experience the fascinating harmony existent between nature and history.